Welcome. Welcome again to our Hopeside Church. And we thank you for being with us all through the morning. And once again, we welcome you for our praise life. In his time, in his time, he makes all things beautiful in his time. Lord, please show me every day as you're teaching me your way that you do just what you say in your time.
Once again, the Hopeside Church welcomes each and every member of the family present here. In whichever platform you are in, YouTube, or, uh, or any other platform that you are worshipping us, we would like to extend our warm welcome to our church. And especially the visitors, for the first time, we give you a warm welcome once again. And we would like you to keep abreast of our, um, of our program on hopeside.org. For any information, you can come over to see and give us your regular feedbacks of what you want us to do for you and that yours, you will grow spiritually as well. This week, we have a pastor, Dr. A.S. Uh, sorry, Pastor A.S. Varkin, to give, us, uh, to give us a divine message. And he is a professor at Spicer Adventist University located at Pune in India. May we be blessed by the message he will bring to us. At this time, we, I have some announcements to make. On uh, every fourth week of the month, we have our outreach programs and uh, we would like you to join us in this outreach program. And we also have our Prophecy Live on every Saturday at 4 p.m. Okay? Sorry, 3 p.m. And on Sundays at 9 p.m. Please join us by Zoom. And we have our own website, that is youtube.com or prophecylive.com. Please check us on on prophecylive.org for more details. And we have another uh, announcement this week as a midweek prayer meeting on every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. and Vespers on Friday at 8 p.m. Please do participate at all our website services by Zoom and the password is given as well. Okay? And we have our um, the women's Bible study on every Saturday at 4 p.m. rather than 3. We used to have it at 3, but we shifted it now to 4 p.m. by Zoom. So you have the ID as well. So please join us and it will be led by Dr. Sonia Selvan. And we also have some prayer and prayer fasting every Tuesday from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. You can join us um, by fasting on this day or whichever kind of fast you would like to prefer. You will, join, you, will, uh, you will use that fasting and still join us in our fasting and prayer. We would be glad to have you as well. At this time, after this, we will, uh, we will, uh, we will have our opening prayer, opening song, Shall We Gather at the River? Shall we gather at the river where the bright angels' feet have trod, with this crystal tide forever flowing by the throne of God?
Now we have the intercessory prayer. Anybody, uh, anybody who has a uh, prayer request and who has a praise report as well, please give in. You can talk it online and give us so that we can pray for you. Anybody? Uh, please pray for Prashant Patta. Prashant Patta. Okay. Sujit Chinta. Prashant Patta and Sujit Chinta. Sujit, yeah. Mm -hmm. And also Julie Prabhakar. for healing, all of these for healing. And to, and for Kishore Singh, Mr. Kishore Singh. Okay. Healing? Yeah. For healing? He, yeah. For healing, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Kishore Singh. Mm -hmm. Okay, and? And I would like to pray for okay. the youngsters who are going through mental health sickness. And uh, last night we were discussing with my colleagues that most of these teenagers, they are going for suicidal, okay. committing suicide, and they're having suicidal uh, you know, thoughts and thinking mm -hmm. of finishing. Mm -hmm. And all we are admitting is those patients. So it was very hard to breaking that young children want to just end their lives when God has given their life to live. Mm -hmm. Do you have any praise report from any one of us? I have a praise report. I would like to thank God for being with me all through the week. Amen. And Amen. He was being so gracious that He had kept me safe and sound and that He made it uh, possible for me to be here. Amen. Thank you once again. Amen. Amen. I, my name is Pramil, and I would like to request prayers for me and my husband, Kelly, so that we will get, have God's blessings as we recover from our illnesses. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. So shall we pray? If we, have, if, we have, if we have none, so if we get into prayer. Okay, let's pray. Gracious Almighty Father, Lord, you have given us once again this wonderful day to call upon thy name. Wonderful time to spend with thee. Mighty Father, we pray for your grace to be with us this day and the days to follow. Mighty Father, we pray especially for our, for our, uh, for us being here. We thank you for protecting us all through the week. Thank you for the food that came before our table. Thank you for the health that we are enjoying every day. Thank you for the friends that we are around us. Thank you for all the good things that you have blessed us, O oh Lord. Thank you for all the uh, all the people who are, uh, who are on the praise today, who are worshipping today. Thank you once again for all the bountiful blessings that you have blessed us. Lord, we once again, we come to you with our, uh, with our sins. Father, we know that you are the only person who can forgive us. Lord, we pray sincerely from our heart to be forgiven of our sins that we have committed. Lord, by our carelessness, our thoughtlessness, and every act that, that is sinful in thy sight. Mighty Father, we pray that you will cleanse us from all our unrighteousness and accept our, our prayer before thee. Mighty God, we pray that you will be with us through this day. At this hour, we pray for the, the, for the, for the healing of uh, Primal and her husband, and for Prashant Chinta, and for Sujit, and for Julie Prabhakar, for Kishore, for Kishore, and we pray for Chao Lin, and we especially pray for the teenagers as well. Mighty Father, you know them all by name. You have made us in your image. And Lord, we brought all these sins 
because of our own sins, O oh Lord, because of our own uh, thoughtlessness and our carelessness. Lord, we have brought all these sorrows upon us, Father. We pray that your pitying eyes will look upon us and you will heal us from all our sins, O oh Lord, and give us the grace to become your children. Help us to remember you that you are the healer and you are the provider. You are the redeemer. Mighty God, we pray that you will heal us once again. And, uh, and we especially pray for the teenagers. Lord, we pray that these little beautiful souls that you have made are ending up their lives for no reason. Lord, for every reason, every simple and the silliest reason that is possible that Satan is leading them to end their lives. Mighty Father, I pray that your presence, that your spirit will dwell upon each soul that is trying to end their lives and be, Lord, and be hastened to listen to your voice and stop their, uh, their silly act of committing suicide. Mighty Father, may you put, may we pray that you will put the Satan under your feet and, and be trampled, Lord, so that these little souls will be, uh, will escape this, uh, this thought of suicide and will realize that you are a loving God and they can come to you with their sins and be forgiven and, and give them another chance to live lives that is pleasing in thy sight. Mighty Father, once again, we come at the speaker of this hour today. We pray that you will be with him. Put the words in his mouth so that all his words will come to, come to us from thy throne of grace. Be with him in everything. In Jesus' righteous and holy name I pray. Let all the congregation say, Amen. Amen. Now we shall. Yeah, we have the offer tree now. Those who have uh, offerings can even uh, can uh, uh, can give us online as well. Can give the offering on online and your tithes and offerings. Let's pray for the offering. Mighty Father, I pray for your grace to be with us. Once again, we come to you with our offerings. Lord, we bless your offering fourfold so that it may be used only for thy cause. In Jesus' righteous and holy name I pray. Amen. We have a scripture reading. Reading from first, uh, from first Samuel 16 verse 11. First, I will read and then the congregation can read up with me again. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? And he said, They remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down until he come thither. Repeat once again, let all of us read together. And Samuel said unto Jesse, are here all thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down until he come. Now we will have a theme song.
we have Pastor Father uh, Warrekan to lead us in the sermon. Pastor Warrekan. Thank you so much for inviting me and happy Sabbath, church. I you, hope you can hear me. Uh, yes. All right, great. How wonderful it is to worship the Lord and to be able to fellowship together this Sabbath again. Amen. It was not too long ago that I was sharing Sabbath with you, and I'm so blessed to be able to share this Sabbath again here with beautiful, wonderful people of God. I always enjoy this, and I'm, I'm blessed to be here. This Sabbath has been quite a hectic Sabbath for us here in, in Spicer. But it has been a blessing. But to me personally, the past few weeks had been quite a challenge. Uh, one of my cousin's husband passed away, I think, uh, close by to you all right there in Maryland. And I don't know if you are, if you know the family, the Shaiza's family, who my cousin's sister lost her husband recently there. And then just a few days back, my only surviving maternal auntie also lost and rested in the Lord at the age of 98. Uh, this, is, this is the life that we live. But the amazing thing of being a follower of Christ is losing a loved one here on this earth is not the end. And I think... To me personally, and I believe it is also yours, that to be a Christian, a follower of Christ, the greatest thing is there is hope beyond this world. And let us hold on to this hope, brothers and sisters. Thank you for the special song, the special music, the prayers. And I pray that all those that we have prayed for, God will be merciful to stretch forward his healing hand and heal you all. Thank you for that Tim song. I love that song. And once again, thank you for inviting me. Today's message is entitled, Somebody or Nobody. I don't know which one you want to be. Somebody or Nobody. Is there somebody amidst us today who wants to be somebody? Or is there somebody amidst us today, this Sabbath morning, who wants to be nobody? Do you know, brothers and sisters, that God can make somebody out of you? Or oh, if you choose this, God can also allow you to become nobody. The choice is ours. That is the power of choice that God has given to us. To choose what we want to be. And God will let it. To choose where we want to go. And God will let you go. Because that is the nature of God. You remember in Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. Let us read together. Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 and it reads please turn your Bible to Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 brothers and sisters the earth, the earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep and the spirit of God, the spirit of God over the was hovering of God. over the face of the waters the earth was without form and void and filled with darkness Oh, brothers and sisters, God made this beautiful world, our home, out of that void and darkness, out of nothingness. The God we serve is so great, so omnipotent, that he can create something out of nothing, something beautiful out of nothingness. Have you ever felt yourself to be so nothing, so useless, so hopeless? You feel compared to others, you are a nobody. 
You feel that you are nowhere as compared to somebody else. Remember, God is so powerful that he could create this beautiful universe, this beautiful earth out of nothing. So if you feel that you are nobody, if you feel that you are nothing, remember, God can create greatness, greatness, somebody out of nobody. This Bible is full of life experiences of people who were nobody, but when they allowed God to take control, they became somebody. This Bible is also full of stories of who was somebody, but became nobody. Oh, brothers and sisters, God desires that we become somebody. And that is why he calls us sons and daughters, heirs of the kingdom of God, because he desire that we become somebody. Many times the world is so crazy and we run after many things in life to become somebody, to become so and so. To become like so and so. And in chasing that dream to become so and so, we end up in life journey. At the end, we look back and we achieve. We have achieved nothing. Don't you ever forget, brothers and sisters, that God has created you so unique. There is not a single one who looks just like you. That means God has a special purpose for you, brothers and sisters. You are that somebody that God wants to use. Why is diamond so expensive? Why is gold so expensive? Why is pearl so expensive? Because they are not common. It is very rare to find such. And if you are the only one in the midst of close to 8 billion people, I believe that you are somebody already. Why do you want it? Why do we want and you and I want to be somebody else when we are already somebody unique one in the midst of billions of people? Somebody, brothers and sisters. You are precious in the sight of God because you are the only one. Oh, brothers and sisters, don't think less of yourself because you are the only one. The Bible tells us that even if you were the only sinner, still Jesus would have come and died. Why would the Son of God leave the glory of heaven if you are not somebody? Oh, we are already somebody in the sight of God. Turn with me to the key text. Oh, to the, to the book of 2 Samuel chapter 15 and 16. Let us go to the background of the story, to the build up to the story of chapter 16, read as our key text today. You remember the story when Samuel was told by God, I want you to go down and you will find a man standing above the shoulders of others, taller than anybody else. I have chosen him to be the first king of Israel. And so Samuel went and sure enough, there was this young man by the name Saul. Standing tall and handsome, but searching for his father's lost donkey. On a mission, brothers and sisters. But remember, Saul comes from the youngest tribe, Benjamin tribe. Yet God chose him. He was a nobody searching for a lost donkey. He was a nobody from the smallest, youngest tribe. 
the least tribe. But God chose him and made him somebody great. And he was made the king of Israel. The first king of Israel. God had great plans for him. God had planned to achieve greatness with him. But you know the story of Saul, brothers and sisters. In chapter 15. Oh, if you read Genesis, 2 Samuel chapter 15. We find this. Command of God to Saul through Samuel. Saul was told, go and destroy 100% of the Amalekites. The Amalekites were not kind to the children of Israel while they chose so torn in the wilderness to the promised land. The Amalekites are evil people. Oh, as I study the, about the Amalekites, it says they were so evil that they could even turn into animals. Because I was wondering why God wanted all the animals also to be killed. God simply told Saul, 100%, just destroy everything. Women, children, men, animals. Nothing of the Amalekites should be left. Oh, you find that in chapter 15, brothers and sisters. And so Saul as commanded went. Saul as commanded went. Brothers and sisters, are we responding to the call of Jesus today? Go, preach, teach, making disciples. So also Saul went that day. But if we read verse 11... God came to Samuel saying, I greatly regret that I have set up Saul as king. God said, I regret that I have set up Saul as the king of Israel. Why, brothers and sisters, will there come a point of time that God would regret that he made you, he made me and sent into this world? Will there be a point of time where God will say, I regret it that I placed him as the pastor. I placed him as a doctor. I placed him as a teacher. I placed him as a father, as a mother, as a son or a daughter or a deacon or elders or anything. Will God ever regret placing you where you are today? God told Samuel, I regret that I made Saul the king. Why? Why? Brothers and sisters, God regretted because Saul failed to carry out the command of God. To God, 99.9 .9 obedience is not good enough. To God, he expects us to obey and follow his command and instruction like Noah. If you read Genesis chapter 6, verse 22, it says, Noah followed the command of God as he was commanded. 100%. That is what God expects of us, to make us become somebody. Saul went to that battle, won the battle, but did not annihilate them. He saved the king of Amalekites, saved the best sheep and the buffaloes and the cows and the cattle. And he brought it back. Oh, brothers and sisters, to follow Jesus, to become somebody in the plan of God, 100% obedience is required. To God, it is either 100% or zero. There is nothing called as 80%, 90%, 99.9%. .9%. Brothers and sisters, 100% obedience or zero obedience. That's it. There is nothing as, oh yes, I will come to church on Sabbath day and six days I will do as I like. There is nothing as, yes, we have 28 beliefs in the church. I will follow 27 and then 28 I'm not very comfortable with. It doesn't work like that, brothers and sisters. 
There are 10 commandments. We cannot say, I will follow nine and 10. I think God will understand. There is nothing called as majority in God. Simply 100% or it is zero. As the Bible says, God expects you to follow the commandment as it is. If you break one of it, you are broken all. And Saul did not obey God's command. And God simply regretted. And in verse 18, chapter 15, verse 18, God told Saul through Samuel, now the Lord sent you on a mission and said, go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they are consumed. Oh, brothers and sisters, what is our commission today? What is our command today? Jesus said, go, teach the world, share to the world, preach to the world, and make disciples. Love one another. Follow me. Are we following the command of God? 100%. As I say, it is either 100% or it is zero. There is nothing in between zero and 100% to God. Obedience is 100% obedience or zero. To become somebody in the plan of God, 100% obedience. If not, zero and it is nobody. There is just nothing in between nobody and somebody. Somebody, 100% obedience. Zero, nobody, brothers and sisters. What do you choose today? Oh, and so Saul went on. Now let us continue reading in 19, 20 and 21 of chapter 15. And it reads, why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Why did you swoop down on the spoil and do evil in the sight of the Lord? Brothers and sisters, what is our intention of following God? How are we following God? Are we swooping down on the spoil of following God and performing or committing evil in the sight of God? Verse 20, and Saul said to Samuel, but I have obeyed. God regretted to God, he had not obeyed. To Saul, he had obeyed. He said so in verse 20. But I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and gone on the mission on which the Lord sent me and brought back the Agag of Amalekite. I have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took the plunder, sheep and auction, the best of the things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice to the Lord God in Gilgal. Two problems, brothers and sisters, we saw that day. One, he did not obey, but he thought he obeyed. Are we like Saul today, brothers and sisters? Saul was made, was made somebody out of nobody. And when he was commissioned by God, he thought he followed the command of God, but he did not. He knew very well that he did not follow, but he simply denied his failure. Are we like Saul today, brothers and sisters? You and I are placed where we are, yet we are not following the command of God. And when we are questioned, we simply deny and claim to have. And when we see things happening, we simply fail to take the responsibility and blame it on somebody. Oh, that did not happen because of such and such fellow. Oh, that was not done because of such and such fellow. Not me. That was the problem of Saul. That was the problem in the Garden of Eden. Eve did not want to take the responsibility. Adam did not want to take the responsibility. Simply the failure to obedience was pushed and pushed towards God, which is not acceptable. Saul was sliding down from somebody in the sight of God 
to nobody, brothers and sisters. Today, brothers and sisters, I want to tell you, you are placed where you are. I am placed where I am. But if we don't obey God, somebody to nobody. But if we obey God, nobody to somebody. Which way do you want to let your life go? What direction? Somebody to nobody or nobody to somebody? The only difference well, that will make somebody to nobody or nobody to somebody is obedience. Brothers and sisters, let's continue. In verse 17, chapter 15, verse 17, oh, moving on. <clears throat> we find this. Samuel said, God, to God, sacrifice is nothing. Obedience is everything. And so if you read in verse 28, for, come with me to 2 Samuel chapter 15, verse 28. And it reads, So Samuel said to him, The Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you today and has given it to your neighbor, the neighbor of yours, who is better than you. Saul was told that day, God chose you and made you the king of Israel. But today, because you failed to follow and obey God, he has taken the kingdom and given it to your neighbor who is better than you. Brothers and sisters, how unfortunate it would be if God were to tell that to us. I have taken that blessing of placing you where you are today because you failed to obey and have given it to your neighbor who is better than you. And that is how we came to chapter 16, the story. Samuel now is commissioned by God to anoint a new king of Israel. So God told Samuel, go down to Jesse's house. And one of the sons anointed him as the king of Israel. Who would have thought in the family of Jesse that one of the sons would become the king that day. Nobody thought. None of them expected. Oh, I tell you, brothers and sisters, when God wants to give it to you, he will bring it at the most unexpected time. You don't have to work hard. Oh, I tell you, brothers and sisters, let us pray. Because in a month's time, the world church will congregate for the general conference, right? New leaders to lead the world church, the remnant church of God will be appointed, right? And the ripple effect of that will be felt all over the world in various divisions and unions and conferences and sections, isn't it? Is it not time for us to go down on our knees and ask God, God, we want you to place somebody who will obey you and stand for the truth to be in that position to lead your world church today? Somebody who will not be like Saul, but somebody who is better than Saul. We need to pray that our leaders are not lovers of chairs. You know, sometimes our, some people are lovers of chairs. They want to sit on the chair. And once they sit on the chair, wherever they go, they want to go with that chair. Let us pray, brothers and sisters, that in this in time, in the history of the world, God would choose leaders who are better than Saul. Who are not going down from somebody to nobody, 
But who is and who are? Nobody. But God would choose them to be somebody. Because they are better than Saul. Why? Because they obey God. And so Samuel, as faithful as he was, went down to Jesse's house and talked to Jesse and he said, where are your sons? God have commanded me to anoint one of your sons as a king. And so the oldest son was called. He came. Samuel thought, oh, surely this must be the king. He looks handsome. He looks strong, big, muscular, manly. In India, we call the Machao man. God said, don't look outside. You look outside. For me, I see the inside. And so the one by one, God said, no. Second, third, no. Fourth, no. Fifth, no. Sixth, no. Seventh, no. And that was when we Rachel came to that verse in chapter 16. Verse 11. And Samuel said to Jesse, Are all the young men here? Are all the young men here? What a profound question. Is that all? Don't you have any more left? Then he said, Then Jesse said, There remains yet the youngest. And there he is. Keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, send and bring him, for we will not sit down till he comes here. Oh, I am excited about this. You know why? Because when God is on a mission, he will not stop until that mission is accomplished, brothers and sisters. Samuel said, we will not sit down until that young man comes home. Until you are placed Made somebody by God. God will not stop brothers and sisters. You know that? You might be unemployed today. But God will not stop until he finds you the best job. God will not stop until he gives you the degree that you require. God will not stop until he gives you the house that you need. The car that you need. The life partner that you need. The healing that you need. Some will say, we will not sit down. Because our mission today is to anoint the king. Oh, God wants to make somebody of you, brothers and sisters. And so David was sent. Was David dreaming about becoming the king? No, he wasn't. Today in the church, one of the young people sang. When others see a shepherd boy, God sees the king. Many might have told you to, in your life, you are a no good person. You are nobody. You are a good for nothing. Oh, brothers and sisters, if you are faithful and obedient to God, let them see a nobody, but God sees somebody in you. When others see a shepherd boy, God saw a king. When others saw slave, in Joseph, God saw the governor of Egypt. When others saw prisoners of war, God saw the highest of the highest ranking officers in the greatest kingdom of Babylon. When others saw a baby boy, God saw a king in Josiah. What do you say, brothers and sisters? Oh, let others see you as a no good, nobody. I tell you, if you obey God and remain faithful to the responsibilities assigned to you, God sees his purpose in you and God sees a somebody in you. When others saw only fishermen, God, Jesus, saw his disciples in Peter, Andrew, James, John. When others saw a tax collector, a sinner, God saw a disciple in Matthew. When others saw a wee little man, a wicked tax collector, Jesus saw a repentant sinner. 
When others saw prostitutes ready to be stoned, Jesus saw a woman, a repentant woman. When others saw a thief on the cross, Jesus looked at the repentant sinner and forgave him and promised him the kingdom. Oh, brothers and sisters, let the world world see what they want to see. But what is important is God should see you as somebody in the image of God. Jesus said, why do you fear and be concerned about those who can only destroy your body? That day, the seven brothers and the father saw a shepherd boy. But God saw the king of Israel in David. Why? Why? How did God see somebody in David? He was faithful to God. He was faithful to his assigned duties. He was fearless. He was willing to let God use him. Brothers and sisters, we can never become somebody until we want, we want to let God take control of us. Until we pray the prayer, Lord, I am just a clay. You are the porter. Take me, make me, shape me, mold me according to thy will. Unless we are willing, God can never make somebody out of us. And we will remain as the clay, nobody. Oh, let's continue in verse 13. Verse 12. So he sent and brought him in. Now he was a ruddy with bright eyes and good looking. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, and this is the one. David was a nobody, the youngest, assigned to take care of the sheep in the pastures. Nobody. But when he was brought home, God told his prophet Samuel, Arise, anoint him. This is the one. This is the better one that I was talking about. I tell you, brothers and sisters, God can make you somebody or God if you don't obey God God can destroy you because that is your choice brothers and sisters do you want to be somebody in the sight of God and God pronouncing that this is the one or do you want to be Nobody. And for God to pronounce, I regret. As Joshua stood up that day and said, Choose ye this day whom will you serve. As for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. I pray, brothers and sisters, that today we will choose to be somebody by letting God take control of us. By being obedient, by being faithful to our assigned responsibilities, that God would say, yes, yes, this is the one. Oh, I pray that we will choose not to be like Saul, that he would destroy and that we will go down to nobody. I tell you, with God on your sight, with God in your heart and in your life, you are somebody, brothers and sisters. But if, with, uh, if you are not with God, if Satan is with you, you are a nobody. Why? Because Satan is a defeated foe. And if you are with a defeated foe, over and over and over again, you are a nobody. But with the victorious God, the living God, the omnipotent, the omnipresent, the omniscient God who can create every beautiful things out of nothing. If he lives in you, how can you be nobody? You are that somebody whom God will say, anoint 
Yes, 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 this is the one. May that be our blessed experience that we allow God to make us somebody. But for that to happen, we have to let God take control of our life. God bless you. And may God keep us safe to be faithful, to be somebody in his vineyard and not nobody. God bless. Happy Sabbath. Uh, thank you, Pastor Warakan, for this wonderful message of being somebody rather than being nobody. May God be with each and every one of us who have heard this message. And may, may be this our prayer, as you said, make us your clay and mold us after your will so that we can become somebody. Thank you once again. Now we will have our closing song. Savior like a shepherd lead us. Savior like a shepherd lead us. Much we need thy tender care. In thy present pleasant pastures feed us. For your use thy fold prepare. Shall we have a word of prayer together? Shall we pray? Almighty oh, God in heaven, we thank you for gathering us today on your holy Sabbath day. Help us to celebrate the Sabbath in your blessing and in your midst, knowing that we will celebrate Sabbath after Sabbath 
for eternity, praising you and worshiping you in your kingdom. Thank you for reminding us through your word today that we are somebody in your sight and not nobody unless we choose to be. Lord, we surrender our life. Take us, mold us, and shape us into somebody that you want us to be. And now as we disperse and go our ways, we pray that you will bless each one of us. Keep us safe until we meet again. And if there is anyone who is struggling in different ways, we pray that you know it and bless them, heal them according to their needs. Thank you for being our forever friend and for listening to our prayers and answering our prayers. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And now, children of God, go in faith. Fear not. Step out into the world. Because our Father has promised to be with us always. May that be your blessing now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for that wonderful words of wisdom, Lord, that, um, Pastor, from, from you. We thank you once again. And we thank you for every one of us who have joined this Zoom. And we have, we pray from the Hope Side Church that you will have a blessed week ahead until we meet for the next Sabbath. Now we will have everyone to, to, um, to meet and greet each other. Hi, Pastor Verican. Hello, God bless you. <laughs> Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath to you too. How are you doing? We are doing good. God has been good. Yes, we are doing well. Thank God. Say hi to your wife. And <laughs> thank you that. for this wonderful message. Thank you so much. God is wonderful. God bless you. God bless you too. <laughs> God bless you too. <clears throat> Thank you, Pastor Varakan, for always accepting to preach even at the last minute. This was a last <laughs> minute arrangement and you stepped oh, it's, in. It's all for God's glory. Yes, of course. Thank you so much again for that wonderful oh, message. Goodness. We are always blessed by your messages. Thank you so much. God be and we are greetings to your family. I'll do that. And greetings to everyone there. And God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath to you too. Hello, Pastor Hurricane. Your, your sermon was excellent, sir. A very appropriate for each one of us. God bless your ministry. And we are blessed to have you all the time. Thank you. Thank you so much. It means a lot. Praise be to God. Amen. Amen. All right. Greetings from India and have a wonderful Sabbath day and wonderful week ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. We'll see you again. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Have a wonderful week ahead, every one of you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.